Our immune system is an extremely complex and delicate mechanism, and from the first day of birth, it begins to form. When we were kids, we were sick all the time, always sniffling our noses, catching a cold, and continuing to run. But as we grow up and become more mature, our immune system learns how to fight off infections, and this immune tuning lasts a lifetime. We train our immune systems to survive in the environment, but once we go to another country, we can very often get sick there. This is also an interesting fact. For example, when people in Europe go to Asia, very often they get food poisoning, and all because our intestinal bacteria are also part of our immune system, and we just from childhood are not trained to that cuisine and the microbes that live there. And if, for example, a Thai person comes to Northern Europe, he will catch a cold instantly because his immune system is also not trained in the local microbes. Amazing, isn't it? But very often, our immune systems can fail. Without realizing it, we often ruin our immunity with some habits from our lifestyle, and then we start to get sick more often. Allergies may appear, or even something more serious. It is especially important to maintain your immunity after 50 years of age. How do you avoid these problems? There is a way out. In this video, I'll tell you about the main habits that destroy our immunity and which you just need to stop. So watch the video till the end. It'll be very interesting and useful. Let's get started. By the way, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to not miss our new videos. The number one thing that wreaks havoc on our immune system is stress. And here recently, there was even a paradoxical situation. The whole world was quarantined and many people were afraid of the coronavirus. But then another problem took place. Because people were sitting at home and were afraid of infection, their levels of stress hormones increased. And that's what leads to lower immunity and therefore increases the likelihood of infection. The more you worry about getting infected, the more likely you will. Many infectious disease specialists and epidemiologists have also said that once you're in a quarantine, at least find a way not to stress about it, because stress only increases the risk. The next thing that wreaks our immunity is a lack of certain vitamins. The first thing we associate with immunity is vitamin C, because it is known that back in the Middle Ages, when seafarers conquered new lands and islands, scurvy raged, and it could cover the whole crew. And as soon as they came up with the idea of giving them citrus fruits, instantly, scurvy was no longer a threat. But there's an important caveat here. If you start eating a lot of vitamin C, your immune system won't get any stronger. It doesn't work that way. The only logic that applies here is if you have a vitamin C deficiency, then your immune system is at risk. But if there is no deficiency, then there is no point in increasing your vitamin C dosages to strengthen your immunity. Vitamin D also plays an extremely important role. It is because of a vitamin D deficiency that people often get sick in winter, or the well-known spring of vitaminosis, when people constantly catch colds in spring. This is primarily because people have a deficiency of vitamin D. Because in winter there are shorter daylight hours, people do not go out very much. Vitamin D is synthesized under the influence of sunlight. Therefore, people have a deficiency of vitamin D and they get sick. That is, the most important vitamins for immunity are C and D. Vitamins A, B6, and E also affect immunity. But the most important is, of course, the first two vitamins, and their deficiency should be monitored. Lack of sleep. It has been proven that in people who are chronically sleep deprived, the leukocyte cells that neutralize infections lose their ability to resist foreign organisms. In addition, lack of sleep increases the production of the stress hormone cortisol, which is also detrimental to the immune system. And there's another interesting and unexpected point here. Studies have shown that loneliness can suppress immunity. So, people who systematically experience loneliness and have little socialization with the world around them have much worse antibody production. Too much fat in the daily diet. Studies have shown that those people who consume a lot of fat daily, especially trans fats, have impaired function and T lymphocytes, which are those cells that resist infections. Alcohol consumption. Everyone knows about the harm of alcohol, 
But the interesting thing is that it also damages the immune system. So, researchers from the University of Massachusetts analyzed a large array of data and concluded that alcohol makes our bodies more susceptible to infections. It slows down wound healing, and it also harms our white blood cells. So that's another reason not to abuse alcoholic beverages. Separately, we need to talk about physical activity because it strengthens our immunity while its complete absence weakens it. There is also something to be said about vigorous exercise. Intensive sports begin to suppress immunity. Very often, it happens when a person has had a good workout in the gym, goes outside, and it's a little damp and cool. They fall ill. Of course, I'm not agitating in favor of completely abandoning intensive exercise. But you should still realize that during the period of intensive sports, it is necessary to take vitamins and not get hypothermic, as well as stay away from those who sneeze and cough. Overcooling. This is why people often get sick in cold weather, because they've dressed inappropriately and have gotten a cold. That's why people so often get sick when they're steamed up. That is, you didn't dry your head, went outside wet and hot after a bath, the wind and rain blew, and you immediately fell ill. Because in this situation, there is also a sharp hypothermia. Here's how it works. An organism has received hypothermia, which is a stress for it. At the same moment, an infectious agent gets inside. In 99% of cases, the immune system can fight them off. But in the case when the body was weakened by hypothermia, a person gets sick. And in general, if a person has a cold, it is recommended not to go outside, but to dress warmer at home. By the way, write in the comments, how is your immunity? Normal? Strong? Or do you often catch colds? Tell me, it'll be interesting. And now, I highly recommend you watch my other video where I talk about the foods that rejuvenate the body. It's very useful and interesting information. The link to the video just appeared on the screen, and the link is also in the description. And I have also pinned it in the top comment. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the video about foods that rejuvenate us. Take care.